Good afternoon. Uh, it falls to me to follow Richard Bradley. Um, somebody had to do this, of course. It's down to me. Um, yes, so what I'm, what I'm going to be talking about uh, today is the, ex the surf excavations in Well Hill um, that we undertook in 2014 and 2015. Um, and I'm going to deal with aspects um, of uh, the excavations. We can't deal with it all in 20 minutes. Um, I should add, and I'll just read that out, that post excavation tasks are ongoing, and accordingly the presentation that follows should be ministered on that basis. All observations are therefore provisional with the narratives. Uh, there's Well Hill, there's the map of Scotland, there's the, the map of the surf project area, and that's where Well Hill is. It is, as the crow flies, uh, 1.25 kilometres uh, north of uh, Dunning, uh, and the uh, Iron Age Hill port of Dunop, which will feature uh, towards the end of this presentation. And it is also uh, indivisible across the Dunning Burn with the uh, late Neolithic uh, complex at Medkett. There's also Bronze Age and uh, later activity there. Um, this is the, uh, the aerial photograph, that's, uh, the transcribed aerial photograph. And Canmore um, tells us that there is, uh, in the uh, top field, an early Bronze Age burial mound like flat pits and uh, in the lower field, uh, a pit alignment, uh, which was the uh, target for the 2014 excavations. This is an aerial photograph taken this year by David Biggles Cowley. And you can see that the trenches from uh, 2014 are uh, visible as crop marks. And that shows you the, uh, uh, the proximity of uh, the trenches quite well. Uh, the, the building, the farm building there, uh, wasn't built when that aerial photograph was uh, done. Okay, 2014. We only lost one student, um, but we had plenty, so he, he wasn't really missed. Uh, the first thing we found is, uh, as we were uh, clearing, was in, in particular in Trench 2, uh, um, was this uh, linear feature which was uh, cut by yard marks. And um, we thought this was some kind of uh, field boundary. Uh, the yard marks or plow marks are uh, typically uh, pre modern plowing, but pre prehistorical in origin because they tend to go at right angles and never in the same direction. Um, but as Fowler said, I think in a book in 1983 on farming, uh, very, very difficult to date anywhere from the Neolithic to the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. However, from the surface subsoil, uh, we were collecting uh, uh, shirts of early Neolithic uh, pottery. When we were cleaning uh, the larger of the trenches, trench one, again, we were picking up shirts of uh, early Neolithic pottery from the soil subsurface, and we also saw considerably more hard marks. And there isn't much left of them. Um, I'm going to try and do, there we are. This is one of the art marks here. Uh, and you can see that they're very, very ephemeral features. And I'm a great believer in cleaning. I would spend three weeks cleaning a trench before digging it. Uh, so what we did was we actually recorded the art marks with a digital uh, GPS, which has sub-centimeter accuracy to make sure that none of the art marks were lost. And here you can see the pit alignment coming down here. There's one pit which goes in the vault there, and another pit goes in the vault there. Then we've got the medieval written furrow, and we also have, which we'll, I'll talk about shortly, is a cluster of lightning and the features here. Anyway, the art mark uh, cut this boundary here, which was very, very similar to the, um, uh, the character of the boundary, what we think was a field boundary in uh, Trench 1, and the field boundary was also cut by a pit. Um, this is, in just looking at the field boundaries and some evidence, this is from Robert Parks, 
excavation on island. When we see this early Neolithic field bank, we could find a big pit. No art marks. And that was dated to around about 3,650 uh, BCE. Now, Rod, uh, interpret these field boundaries, and I've pitched his interpretation, the provisional interpretation for Well Hill. Um, no post holes, no stake holes, and Rod suggested that these fences would have been weak, self-supporting structures. And remember, these have been cut by art marks up here. Now, art marks, sorry about the amount of words on this, but the evidence for Ardmarks in Scotland is very, very poor. Um, we've got some uh, uh, underneath the Bronze Age, the Bronze Age uh, Round Barrow at North Mains. Uh, there were, there's proxy evidence only under the, the Neolithic Barrow of 53. Uh, excavations in Bakri Moor uh, revealed Ardmarks described to the uh, uh, late Neolithic period, and that was based on uh, uh, pottery typology. And at Elgin Hall, the Roman site excavated by Bill Hansen, uh, in the monograph, uh, he suggested that there were late Bronze Age or uh, Iron Age. Now, Bill visited Well Hill during the excavations, and he was intrigued by the yard marks of Well Hill. And we, when we finished the excavations, we had a, a quite a long meeting in his office uh, discussing Elgin Hall and, um, uh, and Well Hill. And now he is uh, changing his opinion, he's reassessing the evidence from Elgenhall and believes that the art marks at Elgenhall were broadly contemporaneous with the Neolithic Pitsy Pack. So, what we've got, we've got an alignment and then pits. Eight pits were excavated, none of them were wholly excavated. We left more of the pits uh, for future reference than we excavated. Uh, seven of those pits were left open. And for a number of the pits, there were numerous sherds of early Neolithic pottery uh, within the charcoal rich matrix, which effectively sealed the pits. Uh, there's a couple of the, what I've described as monumental pits, not as big as Dublin Farm and Angus, but monumental as far as I'm concerned. And there's some of the sherds of um, early Neolithic pottery that was coming out of them. And here you see the ceiling here, this is the, the matrix sealing off the pit as it was gradually filled in. And here again, this is the sealing matrix here, sealing off the pits. So it's interesting that the pits are sealed off. We don't have any radiocarbon dates yet, we're waiting for them. But the working narrative is they were, uh, they were dug in the early Neolithic, sealed in the early Neolithic, having been left open for a considerable period of time. Uh, more uh, pits. Uh, one of the interesting things we found is this is basically, as we're excavating, a nice working shot of the shirts as we're coming across them. But what we did find was conjoining shirts of early Neolithic pottery uh, from pit feature two and feature three, which suggests they may have been sealed off at the same time. You can't be, it, it may not have happened, but it, it's, it's reasonable. Uh, evidence at this stage to go with that as a narrative. Uh, so the early Neolithic uh, uh, pits, we've got pit nard marks, which cut linear field boundaries. We think the pits and the yard marks may be contemporaneous, very difficult. We think the pits are quarry pits for material to construct, to construct uh, the second phase of field boundaries, say earthen boundaries. And you would say, well, why on earth would you think pits? To construct boundaries. Well, they're digging them into the ubiquitous furniture, gravels, and sand. Why on earth would you construct an earthen boundary with good topsoil that you can grow stuff in? So, what you do is you dig out the rubbish and you make a field boundary with the rubbish. That is uh, how we're uh, viewing this at the moment. Things may change. Uh, pit clusters. There's the, the famous photograph of uh, Dutton Farm. Uh, interpreted as associated with crop processing. These pits were also left open, but uh, shirts of early, uh, early and late Neolithic pottery were recovered from the pits of Dublin Farm, uh, which is certainly not the case of Wellhead, it's all early Neolithic. 
And they are generally not associated with dwellings other than it carries sterling, uh, where there was evidence for overbuilt structures interpreted as uh, co contemporary to the, the Olympic pit cluster. And I'm prompted there to say that in the, the book about the pits, there's a very good uh, uh, paper in there by Kenny Brophy in, in Gordon Noble about pits in Scotland. Uh, so what have we got? We've got here, we've got a cluster of late Neolithic features. And it, it, it's just here. There's no, no other evidence of the late Neolithic anywhere in this country. We've got the decommissioned post hole and some pits. And from those, uh, from the post hole and the pits, we've got shirts of boom and press wares and one shirt uh, of people. And of course, these features here may well be uh, contemporaneous with the uh, complex at Lev Ketty across the Dun and Burn. Uh, here are some of the features, the like the other features. Uh, this is a decommissioned post hole. You can see a pattern stone still wedged in there. Uh, uh, this is a uh, this is actually three pits, independent pits, and these are the, uh, an example of some of the uh, pottery recovered from those features. Um, so moving on, um, intrigued by finding the early Neolithic, we move on to 2015, and we end up with this very funky trench. And you're saying, why have you got a funky trench like that? Well, what we had was power pavers. And uh, health and safety being what it is, we couldn't let the digger go under the power cables. So we ended up with a very nice demarcation of area A, you can see about 2,100 uh, square meters were opened. And what we did was, I was very concerned about opening up such a big area, but then setting out grid squares, stringing up grid squares, pending the grid squares, and getting. Um, the pre-excavation plan done by hand on the basis this was going to take days and days and days. And when you're working in Scotland once for the last three years, the weather has been very calm, it is not unusual to use two, three, four days to the well. It's happened before. So what we did was we did the pre-ex and 90% of the post-ex planning using uh, a digital GPS station. And that's got sub centimeter accuracy. It meant that we were we spent two days cleaning the trench and we were into features on day three. Uh, so remarkable, it's, it's something that uh, we've decided we'll keep doing. It, it worked very, very well. Well Hill 2015 was a test case in the past week as well. We also had the gyrocopter, which was great for taking photographs, which we could uh, print off, stick it to the day book and annotate. This is area A, we've got a fist cluster, a, a pit with a, a post hole in it there. Uh, charcoal deposit there with some modern pottery. We've got quite excited for a moment and then quickly lost interest. And what we've got is, of course, we've got these ubiquitous paleo channels that we see all over uh, uh, Perthshire that have caused, uh, as Gordon will remember, uh, much problems, many problems in the past. Uh, in area A, uh, what we've got is we don't have quarry pits, we've got midden pits. And they're quite big pits, and um, lots of early Neolithic pottery. Nothing uh, in 2015 uh, suggested anything to do with the late Neolithic. It's all early Neolithic. And this is some of the nearly 200 shirts of early Neolithic pottery. This is one of the, um, uh, the pits. And all of the pottery came out of this layer here, this charcoal rich layer here. There was no pottery. Sorry, all of the pottery came out of this layer here this context, nothing out of this context here. And I was particularly delighted to find um, a fragment of Polish stone axe, group six, Polish stone axe, and uh, uh, perhaps it's uh, fortuitous that Richard Bradley is in sitting there, because he would be able to tell us all about them. And we also found iron pitchstone and some flint iron pitchstone on the mainland of Scotland is generally associated with the other period. Uh, it, it is found in a Mesolithic context, but generally comes, starts being used in, in the Neolithic period. And uh, this is the, the, the book on pits that uh, uh, Gordon's paper is in. It's a very good book, very interesting. Uh, the, 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 the pottery assemblage from World War XV is markedly different to the uh, early Neolithic assemblage from uh, uh, 2014. 
Um, the latter comprises of sherds from multiple vessels which may have been broken in performance and gathered together for structure, for structure deposition in single point uh, The former indicates sherds from pure pots which would be discarded for the part and possibly pro processing waste. But it, it's the whole point of this, this wonderful volume is the pits are never just mundane. And the status of the polished stone acts, uh, much ink has been written about it and you know, if we go back to, to Richard's book in 1993 and many others since. Uh, the, the cosmology is associated with polished stone acts. The fact that they're broken in performance suggests that if you deposit them in a pit, there's, there's something other than the disposal of rubbish. And for example, we've got uh, a structure to disposal of fragments of group six polished stone axe. Um, at Blair Hill and uh, Another uh, fragment was recovered from Mabo. That was dated to the early Neolithic period. And in excavations last year, we simply uh, uh, published um, uh, a fragment of a, a group six polished stone axe from Snake Quarry in South Lanarkshire. Again, dated to the uh, early Neolithic period. But what is potentially most intriguing about 2015 was. In 2009, one of the ditches of the Roman Hillfall um, produced a radio partner. And it was largely written off as uh, anomalous. There was no artifacts, nothing to suggest that somebody in the early Neolithic could be doing something in there other than this uh, uh, radio partner. And a further part of the uh, ditch, which was, it was excavated uh, this year, of Dunlop, which is actually the third season of excavation. And there we have an inverted early Neolithic pot, complete in the ditch that produced its death. Now, um, that was very, very, very exciting. In the, above this, you've got like Neolithic pottery, but right at the bottom, you've got the early Neolithic pot. And the idea of a ditch till the top of the is previously unknown in Scotland. The phenomenon is known in, in England, for example, the Garden's Edge uh, and the Tower of the Cumbria. And it may well be there are other instances. I just use this for, oops, for example. So, what we've got is we've got this wonderful uh, movement of the early Neolithic down to Well Hill, the late Neolithic at Well Hill, across the Dublin Burning to Lake Petty. And it's this wonderful idea of transitions because we've got Bronze Age at Well and we've got Bronze Age at Red Petty. It, it was a very, very interesting story to tell about transitions from the early Neolithic to the late Neolithic to the Bronze Age, which Kenny Brophy and I are talking about the phase two monograph of the uh, search program. Now, in doing some reading, and as you do, I came across this very interesting quote. Now, this is a quote from a long way off. It's been used. And it's somebody who was working on the Rondex, the incredible late Neolithic uh, doc, uh, uh, monuments, uh, uh, multiple dish uh, monuments uh, um, on Bain and Duke. And basically, what he said, collateral, meaning second view, explanation for the building, the monumental structures, may lie in the general needs for the absorption of energy previously spent in agriculture part of Europe. And this has sort of got me thinking about the early Neolithic. And the late Neolithic. And looking at, because the idea of performance and ritual in free history, it, 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 um, th there's not the separation of the sacred and the profane. It's all of race. And Richard was talking about that in relation to the last. It is the grace scale, um, perhaps, of cosmology, cosmology uh, and symbolism. And just thinking about very much, very much thinking about it at the moment, we're seeing what we've got is settlement at Dunop and Well Hill with the ritual associated with the settlement. And at Lev Ketty, perhaps we've got ritual settlement. This is a, a four poster with two portal pol pol posts, which was excavated by Gordon Noble in 2012. And from a lot of these posters, Gordon would be able to tell us from exactly how many. There was an awful lot of um, group where pottery shirts recovered from that. But this is something that I'm thinking about now: is the difference between settlement ritual and ritual settlement. 
on the basis is you farm first, you secure the land, you secure your food stuff, then you worry about buildings. So wherever we're seeing early Neolithic monuments, perhaps we should be thinking about what were they doing before they got the monument, as opposed to thinking that that's their first incursion into that area. Uh, quickly, uh, area C, which is called the Canmore, the uh, Bronze Age uh, monument. Uh, these again are the features of potentially got two um, uh, entrances. And what we've got is this, some of the stuff associated with the pit crosses in, uh, in an area B, there's a foot there, and there's another one up here somewhere. Um, we've got, this has been very badly damaged by pre-1952 power. I know that because I've spoken to farmer about it, but you can see the plow lines here, which is seriously trash, uh, this part of the trench. In fact, it was trashed 50 years before the schedule. Um, and we put in box sections here to see if we could pick up the palisade, which is going around the, um, uh, this, 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 this off-center area. Now, what we've got in the center of this is, you can see there, this is the end grid in the field, and you can see all the families. But what we've got is we've got this silk spread here, and the palisade is coming around there. This appears, comes around here, this appears. But we think this silk spread, I was talking to a colleague here in Campbell about it, and, uh, what we think that it is, is we think this is the footprint of a man, an earthen man, uh, which is effectively, um, because the mound was there, this survived some of the ravages of the plan. However, this, what we think is a ghost of, the vestigial remains of a kiss. When we cleaned the trench and you looked at it, it looked as if it was a kiss. And then you cleaned it again and there was very little left in it. So we think this has been sitting quite hard and has basically gone with the plan. Sorry, right. Uh, and here we have another kiss. And that was better. And the kiss structure had been disturbed by plowing, as you can see here. Um, if anything was covering the top, it had gone. But let me just quickly say, um, at this point here, the natural is a very, very poor sound. What had then happened was um, a, fine, uh, a layer of very fine sand be placed over the coarse sand. What then happened was there was a cradle or nest of subangular uh, and sub-rounded stones placed on top of the vein sand, and then the burnt remains uh, were placed on top of the stone cradle or nest. Now, we think that the bones were placed in some kind of organic material, uh, bag or, or, or something like that, basically because of the compaction of the burnt bones. Obviously, the, burnt, uh, the organic bag hasn't survived. Um, and that, the bone is currently being picked apart by uh, Dr. Susan uh, Ramsey, as uh, I present. So, so, the triple kiss at Fort TV was encircled by a self secure defense palisade. We think basically that's what we've got at Well Hill 2015. Um, we think that uh, we can distinguish this, uh, the, the 2015, and uh, on the basis there's no evidence whatsoever for uh, um, an earthen barrel of Cairn at 14 years. Uh, earthen mounds marking Bronze Age burial mo prep mon monuments are appreciably less common than Cairns. Uh, so it, it's quite interesting, uh, something to explore. And the character of the in the Dunning Ring Ditch, which is also described in Canmore, is a flight down burial mound, is very, very similar to the Well Hill Ring Ditch. And there's the nice aerial photograph, post that aerial photograph. And what can I say is, uh, just to finish off, um, the evidence early in the early settlement of Well Hill, together with the possibility of a contemporaneous digital top of the road with the not, really is a major resource to explore and for understanding of the archaeology of Dunning and its places in a wider landscape. And the excavations of the world of Rinkage may have added to our understanding of Bronze Age uh, military activity, activity in Sir Thank you.